at noon starts right now. And we start with a deadly crash on I-35 just east of downtown. Two people killed. Traffic halted as police spent hours investigating. And crews still on the scene there. We begin our team coverage this noon with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, Stephen, what do we people need to know if they're going to be driving in that area right now? David Lee, this is still a problem, and it's been a problem for several hours. 35 at New Braunfels may not look like there's a lot going on here from this shot at Transguide, but let's get that closer look right now. As we bring you closer in, we do see first responders are still on the scene following this deadly crash that we learned about just minutes ago. Uh, but of course, we know that this has been a problem for commuters and drivers for quite a while. You can see that huge stretch of road off 35 at New Braunfels has been blocked off as first responders are working to clear this scene up. Let's go ahead and start with that bird's eye view of the map because thankfully, we do have some other crashes elsewhere, but they're not really causing a problem in terms of commute. But as we bring it in here to 35 northbound, that stretch of red, orange and yellow, that's where we're still seeing a slowdown due to that crash off I-35 northbound at North Walters. Again, keep in mind that section is going to be closed for several hours as first responders and traffic investigation continues to wrap things up there, but that's unclear how long that will last. Uh, now, keep in mind, if you do have to travel in from 37 and 35 is your commute, you can easily exit off of Houston Street and get onto at and Center Parkway to avoid all of that mess right now, but it has definitely been a mess and that's where we find Jonathan Cotto, who is live there this morning. Jonathan, we know it's been a problem for commuters. What can you tell us? Stephen, that's right. The scene here hasn't changed much. Those northbound lanes on I-35 near Walter Street still not open to the flow of traffic. And let me tell you, it's been a busy morning for San Antonio Police and their Traffic Investigation Division who have been piecing together the details, trying to learn exactly how this deadly crash unfolded. But let's take a look at what that scene looked like earlier this morning. We've learned San Antonio Police responded to the main lanes of I-35 close to 8 o'clock this morning. Now they tell us, an officer spotted the silver SUV driving erratically and attempted a traffic stop. But the driver of that SUV managed to speed off within seconds, swerving between several vehicles. He attempted to make an entrance into this highway, but struck a metal barrier. Uh, when he struck the metal barrier, the vehicle began to flip several times, um, ejecting two male individuals. The two males ejected from the SUV were pronounced dead at the scene. Police tell us they were two out of seven men inside that vehicle. Now, four other men inside that SUV were taken to a nearby hospital. Two of them are said to be in critical condition, and another is in custody for questioning. They're trying to determine who the driver of that SUV was. But again, this crash remains under investigation. As more information is made available, we'll bring that information to you. Reporting live from the city's east side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Staff at the medical examiner's office working to positively identify a bicyclist who was hit and killed on a north side street, but they believe he was an 18 year old man. San Antonio police say the driver who hit him on Bassey Road near McCullough may have been speeding. And as Katrina Weber tells us, the crash also left two people with injuries. A normally dark stretch of Bassey Road is bright with lights as San Antonio police and paramedics work in response to a deadly crash. They say an 18 year old man on a bicycle was hit by a car and killed as both vehicles headed west near McCullough around 10 last night. Investigators are looking at the car driver as causing the crash. They say that 35 year old woman may have been speeding before she lost control, sending her car rolling. Those markings on the ground show the path the car took. It rolled across all lanes of traffic, took out two of these heavy wooden barricades, and then smashed into that tree. At some point along the way, police say the car also hit the man on the bike, killing him. The car driver and a baby who was with her both suffered injuries and were taken to a hospital. Police say this crash is still under investigation, so they don't know yet whether she will face charges. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Right now, the search is on for a trio of robbery suspects. Investigators hope you can help track them down. It happened Sunday around midnight at a gas station on South Zarzamora. Police tell us three suspects approached three men in the parking lot. That's when we're told the suspects allegedly pointed guns at the victims, robbed them, and then took off with their vehicle. If you have any information about this case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number right there on your screen, 210-224-STOP.
Happening today, residents on the east side encouraged to attend a public meeting today about the future of their community. The city's planning department is hosting the meeting this evening at St. Phillips College. City staffers will be presenting draft recommendations for the community and residents. They're being asked to give them their feedback. The information gathered tonight is going to be used to help finalize plans that will be implemented in the future. The meeting is from 6 to 730 this evening in the Sutton Learning Center building. Plan while you can. That's the message from TxDOT ahead of Fiesta. The agency is encouraging people to plan ahead and make sure they have a safe ride home. The Plan While You Can campaign emphasizes having a safety plan in place before you head to any of the Fiesta events. That can include having a designated driver or using public transportation or rideshare services. The goal is to get DWI arrests down to zero. We haven't had a drunken related fatality during Fiesta. But from two, 2019, the last uh, normal Fiesta, full up Fiesta, and prior, we've averaged over 200 DWI arrests. TxDOT aims to reinforce the message through their highway signs. And San Antonio's 73rd Ray Feo visiting yet another school to encourage children to stick to their studies. It is actually his 73rd school. Ray Feo Augie Cortez Jr. went to St. Anthony Catholic School today. He tried to motivate them to not only do their best in their classes now, but also think about the future. The Ray Feo Consejo Educational Foundation awards scholarships. To learn more about Ray Feo scholarship program and scholarship eligibility requirements, you can visit rayfeoscholarship.com. Scholarship applications are available for high school seniors in January of each year. And today we'll be giving away our 2022 KSAT Weather Authority Fiesta Medal. The giveaway will be at the Children's Hospital of San Antonio. Always a fun time. The line's going to start at 4. We'll be giving away the medals at 6. And the medals are available while supplies last. Gusty winds, some cool temperatures today. Things change a little bit, though, as we head towards the weekend. That forecast is coming up. It is a special day at UTSA. 15 former Roadrunners take part in the annual Pro Day. Our Larry Ramirez is live with the details later in sports. Today marks one month of war in Ukraine. The country continues to battle Russian forces, leading to stalemates in multiple places. That's even though Ukraine's troops are outnumbered. ABC's James Longman has the latest from Lviv, Ukraine. I'm in a community center here in Lviv where people, hundreds of people come all day to get food, to get medication. Many of these people will have been coming from Mariupol, that besieged city to the southeast of Ukraine. The United Nations says now 10 million people more have been displaced uh, across this country. And this, as that siege of Mariupol continues, thousands remain trapped as supplies like food and water and power are running low. But Ukrainian forces there are still holding on. U.S. officials now saying some of the most egregious accounts of what could be considered war crimes are happening in this strategic port city. There's a sense Putin did not expect the response there. This verified video shows Ukrainian tanks firing on Russian forces. And this drone video shows a series of explosions at a steel plant. Both videos have been released by the far right Azov Battalion, which has been incorporated into the Ukrainian National Guard. But it's not clear when they were taken. That same sense of resilience in the occupied city of Kherson, where protesters took to the streets for the second day in a row. Russian troops breaking up the crowd with tear gas. The Ukrainian military has taken advantage of Russia's stalled advance. They've reclaimed territory like the Kiev suburb of Makariv. A senior U.S. defense official has told ABC News that Russian troops are now running low on food and fuel. Some lack even the gear to protect from frostbite. But despite Russian setbacks, brutal attacks on civilian targets do continue. In southern Ukraine, a Russian missile pummeling the psychiatric hospital in the city of Mykolaiv. And as a human toll of the invasion mounts, concerns now that Putin may seek to escalate this war further. The Kremlin spokesperson has even refused to rule out the use of nuclear weapons. Now, President Biden is in the region uh, this week trying to solve this vast uh, humanitarian crisis, but also looking to talk to his uh, counterparts in NATO to try to expand military assistance to troops here in Ukraine. We know it is really, really making a difference. James Longman, ABC News in Ukraine. Outside with live cam, absolutely gorgeous. A little chilly. This, oh, there are a couple of clouds. We can see clouds, but it was a little chilly this morning. Were you cold this morning? I was cold. I needed a light jacket, but this afternoon feeling a lot better, especially in that sunshine. We're going to check in with our meteorologist, Justin Horn.
Yeah, it is nice out there now. A little bit of wind, but we're getting used to that now. It feels like it's been windy almost every day. Uh, temperatures are going to climb up close to 70 this afternoon. Looking really good. What is not looking good, the aquifer. It's down six tenths of a foot to 655.2. We are very much in stage one restrictions. And looking at the pollen count, everything's low here. Our tree pollen, our normal tree pollen is there. Oak, ash, mulberry, and hackberry. All in the low category, though. We're going to talk rainfall. When can we see some more and what is our lack of rainfall looking like? We've got that information coming up. So here's my question for Justin. Is it my imagination or has it been a lot drier and a lot windier the last several months? I'd say so. Yeah, you think, you think I, so? Yeah, I agree with that. You know, it's it's part of our sort of our general pattern, La Nina, that we're in, and this tends to happen. We get uh, drier than normal conditions, and uh, we've got some gusty winds too. It's it's a bad combination because that leads to some grass fires. I want to show you the month of March where we stand right now. About a quarter of an inch of rain, and we're down about 1.37 inches below average. And uh, the only days we've really received rain are the 11th. And the 21st, and it wasn't much, again, a quarter of an inch total. And then we're projecting out as we go into even next week that we're not going to get much rain. It's probably not until Tuesday that we have a chance, a chance. But th I think the important number here is that we've only seen 4.48 inches. Now, this is at San Antonio International since October 28th. That's not enough. If you go east of town, the rain has been... Uh, a little better and the drought conditions aren't as bad but as a whole we do need rain and the prospects for more rain aren't great as we look at the uh, seasonal rain outlook and this is for april may and june it's projecting that we'll see below average rainfall uh, going into summer and that's not what we want to see now without being said this is a generalization we know here in south texas that we can go months without rain and then we get one big rainfall and it completely erases our our deficit right so we do have to watch for that we still can see flash flooding uh, but this is the sort of the general idea going forward and the aquifer has taken a hit we showed you that earlier it's down to 655.2 we are in stage one restrictions which means once a week watering uh, before 11 a.m and after 7 p.m uh, for those lawns that are starting to need some water, but we're not uh, not able to water them well only once a week, uh, just based on where the aquifer is right now. Our rain chances, as I said, don't show up again until Tuesday, and even then it's a low chance. I think probably middle part of next week we'll have a shot at some showers and maybe a few thunderstorms. Outside right now, if it's not rainy, at least it's nice. 65 degrees, northwesterly winds at about 12 miles per hour. Dew point is way down there at 22, and we've got gusts to 22 miles per hour. 61 in Kerrville, 60 in Fredericksburg. It did get down to freezing this morning in Kerrville. That was the one spot. Everyone else stayed above that mark, but it was chilly. 64 Uvalde, 63 Del Rio, 69 in Cotula. A little closer look here, 61 for our friends in Canyon Lake, 59 Bernie State, 64 Comfort, 62 right now in Bandera. Winds today, 5 to 15 and gusty. It's not going to be overly windy, but we will see sort of a breezy to windy day. Uh, uh, wind gusts will be up close to 25, I think, from time to time. But by tonight, those winds die down. We'll see less than a wave of wind, and that's going to lead to another chilly morning coming up tomorrow. Dew points are low. We talked about that combination of dry conditions and gusty winds. So we have a fire danger, especially west of San Antonio, next couple of days with those winds kicking up. The good news is we get a little more humidity by the weekend, and that sort of uh, takes away the fire threat a little bit. And then by Monday, that dew point's jumping back up. And again, down the line, we're hoping that leads to some rain. Here's a look at the big picture and the pattern that we have underway. Big trough across the middle part of the country. You can see little areas of low pressure sort of swinging around that. That's what may bring us a little bit of cloud cover later this afternoon. And then by tomorrow, this trough finally moves away, and that's when temperatures will start to ramp up some, too. As we look at the satellite picture, there are some clouds and yeah, a little bit of rain trying to develop there in the Panhandle and in parts of Mexico, probably not reaching the ground, very dry at the surface. But some of these clouds will work their way into our area today. So here's how the forecast looks. By 3 p.m., 69 degrees, 70 by 4 p.m., uh, down into the upper 60s by 6, 7 o'clock. We'll call it partly cloudy. And then by tonight, we're falling back down into the 50s pretty quickly. And by tomorrow morning, we're back in the 40s uh, for lows. 40 to start your Thursday. 76 and windy tomorrow. 84 on Friday. There's your warm-up. Mid-80s Saturday and Sunday. 
And then by next week, a little more spring like 84 Monday, 86 on Tuesday with that chance of rain. No, we need the rain, but I'm going to soak up this sun while we have it. Pretty thankful for it. Thanks, yeah. Justin. Mm -hmm. You know, UTSA had a great season this last year, and a lot of guys are trying to take advantage of all the notoriety that that team has been getting. Yeah, absolutely. And this is going to be one of the first times in a couple of years that almost every single NFL team is represented at UTSA Pro Day. Today, it's the annual Pro Day. When we come back, Larry Ramirez is live. We will talk to him and get a preview of what's going on down there at the Race Center. Plus, Nalissa Smith is up for a major national award. Got that too. Next. I hope I don't see all hundred roadrunners out there cheering for our former players. I hope they're in class, but there's a tremendous buzz in the building. Excitement is in the air this afternoon as former and current roadrunners take part in the annual Pro Day in Big Board Sports. Now this year Pro Day will just be a little bit more special at UTSA this year with several roadrunners looking to springboard from the best season in program history to an NFL roster. Three key pieces of last year's squad already made some noise at the NFL Combine a couple weeks ago, including star running back and Judson alum Sincere McCormick. They joined 12 other former players on campus with another shot to impress NFL scouts. For more on that, we take you live right now to the Race Center where our Larry Ramirez is watching the workouts firsthand. Hey Larry. Hey, Andrew, and thank you very much. Yes, we are inside the race building right now where UTSA Pro Day just got started a few minutes ago. Now, once they are done inside here, they will move outside for field drills. Houston Texans general manager Nick Casario is on hand. In fact, all 32 NFL teams are expected to be here, and that's huge for every single former UTSA football player here, especially for those not invited to an NFL scouting combine because this could be their last chance to impress NFL scouts in person. But for Spencer Burford, Tariq Woolen, and Sincere McCormick, those three will look to build off of their scouting combine numbers, trying to improve where they see necessary. Head coach Jeff Trailer is pumped, and I mean pumped for all of his guys. It's just good. Uh, it just lets them know. And there's so many things that the scouts have said so good about these guys. I'm really excited for them, from the way they prepared, the way they practiced, the energy level. Um, it, it, it makes me uh, a proud of where, of where we've come in two years. Yes, this program has taken some big steps in the last two years. We will have more from UTSA Pro Day tonight at 6. Andrew, back to you. Thanks a lot, Larry. Meantime, the remaining players on the current UTSA roster returned to the practice field yesterday afternoon. The coaching staff wasted little time getting the team back in gear, putting the pads on for an intense practice right after spring break. And the Roadrunners like the message that that sends. You learn who the real guys are who want to step up and want to put hands on somebody and actually do what, a, do what they're supposed to do and hold guys accountable, do what the coach do, so we could get things done. It's pretty up to this spring because we know how our schedule ahead, everybody, how everybody looking at us from last season. So we just trying to come out on top again, prove everybody wrong again. This is all building towards UTSA's Fiesta Spring Game on April 14th at Dub Ferris Stadium. Congratulations to East Central alumna Melissa Smith, who is named one of four finalists for this year's Naismith Player of the Year. The Baylor Bear has already been named First Team All-American by Sports Illustrated, The Athletic, The Associated Press, and the USBWA. And oh, by the way, she's also the Big 12 Player of the Year. The honor will be awarded on March 30th in Minneapolis. Coming up later in sports, the Spurs look for some momentum after their thrilling win on Sunday night. Can't get much better than Kelton Johnson's win. Hopefully they can make it two in a row. So it's so about your head coach. We didn't get the community fired up about a pro day at this campus. Hey, it's the least we can offer. 32 teams are yeah. fired up for it, too. That's awesome stuff, but I would suggest those kids be in class. <laughs> <laughs> well, new today at 5 nowadays, we snap quick pictures on our phones. But today we're talking about that box of old family photos and memorabilia, the one that's sometimes forgotten. 12 on your signs, Marilyn Moritz tells us how to keep them safe today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. A natural gas line fire erupted and highway closures were caused in the evacuation of hundreds of families in a town in the Dallas Fort Worth area today. The fire was in Mansfield and it was sparked when a vehicle hit a gas line. The driver was hospitalized with serious burns. It took firefighters more than two hours to get the fire under control. The Biden administration is providing more than $1.7 billion in funding to help Louisiana bounce back from deadly hurricanes. Parts of the Bayou State were devastated by hurricanes Laura and Delta in 2020. 
followed by Hurricane Ida in 2021. More than 8,000 Louisiana households are still living in temporary shelters like trailers and manufactured housing. Another 1,400 are being forced to live in hotels because of the storms. That's coming to us from FEMA. Lawmakers are welcoming this news. However, Republican Congressman Garrett Graves complains these funds should have been made available six months ago. And if those hurricanes weren't bad enough, that nasty weather that hit cities in our area moved into other communities like Louisiana. A tornado tore through parts of New Orleans and a few of the suburbs overnight. And now the National Guard is on its way to offer some help. ABC's Will Carr is in Louisiana with a look at the damage folks are trying to sort through today. We were in our hotel and got a tornado warning on our cell phones and within 60 seconds the tornado was on the ground here and it packed a punch. You can see all of this damage in the distance. The building with the red door. That's a church. The roof is caved in. This street took a direct hit. You can see what's left of this business. It's gutted and you can hear that alarm going off in the background. As the sun is coming up here, there is still a search for survivors. At least one person has been killed. We know seven others were injured. Many residents here tell us that they are thankful to be alive, and we're expecting the governor on the ground a little bit later today to survey all this damage. In St. Bernard Parish, Louisiana, Will Carr, ABC News. Thoughts and prayers to everyone affected by those storms here. Thankfully, our severe weather in our rear view Beautiful blue skies out there today. A few clouds in the sky. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the wake of that storm system, we're getting some gusty winds on the back side of it. And by the way, that storm system is going to keep moving east. What a big one it was. A memorable one. It's a true spring system. And again, gusty winds for us today. That's also going to lead to a little bit of a fire threat as we get out west. I want to show you the picture here across Texas. You see some rain there, what looks like rain across the Texas Panhandle, probably not reaching your ground. There's a lot of dry air at the surface. And so uh, it's mostly just cloud cover. Some of these clouds may work in our direction uh, a little bit later today. Temperatures really on the chilly side for for mid March, mid late March. 63 Waco, 55 right now in Abilene, still 47 in Amarillo, 53 Lubbock, 68 down in Laredo. So kind of a coolish day. Temperatures will make it up to close to 70 this afternoon here in San Antonio. But with those gusty winds, the dry air, we mentioned this earlier, there is a fire risk. Uh, for points west of San Antonio. The biggest threat is up across parts of West Texas, but we got to be really careful here too. This seems like it's been pretty much a mainstay uh, over the last couple of weeks as dry it has, as it has been. And so th that fire risk forecast is there. It will be there again tomorrow and uh, we'll be keeping a close eye on it. Forecast for today, we're up around 70 for a high, but tonight those temperatures fall off pretty quickly. We're down to 40 again tomorrow morning. So as you get those kiddos ready for school, they're going to want the coat, especially if they're going to be out the bus stop tomorrow morning. Uh, could even see a few 30s on the map before things warm up again. And then we get a big warm up for the weekend. We'll have a look at that. Plus, we've got some preliminary information on that tornado down around Kingsbury, the track and timing. We'll look at that too, coming up in just a bit. Moderna just shared some results for its vaccine for children six months to five years. The company said the vaccine had what it calls a robust neutralizing antibody response and a favorable safety profile. There were some adverse reactions to what they were mild or moderate and typically happened after that second shot. Moderna says it will ask the FDA to authorize the vaccine in the next coming weeks. Pfizer-BioNTech's COVID-19 vaccine for kids younger than five is still in the works. Last month, the FDA postponed a meeting of its vaccine advisors to consider that vaccine because they wanted more data on the third dose. The historic confirmation hearings for Supreme Court nominee Judge Katanji Brown Jackson entering the third day. Judge Jackson faces yet another round of intense questioning. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from Capitol Hill. A trailblazer, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson, taking the hot seat again as the first black woman nominated to serve on the Supreme Court. Today, starting with a more emotional tone, touting her close connection to law enforcement and history of public service. I grew up um, with family members who put their lives on the line. I worked to protect our country. My brother worked on the front lines, and it was all because public service is important to us. She faces another grueling day of questioning after nearly 13 hours yesterday. I'm thankful that the American people have the opportunity to observe it, 
And I'm thankful for your presence, Judge, for your service to the country. The nominee spent Tuesday sparring with Republican committee members in defending her record. Do you agree with this book that is being taught with kids that, that babies are racist? I do not believe that any child should be made to feel as though they are racist. Why in the world would you call Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld and George W. Bush war criminals in a legal filing? Well, Senator, I don't remember that particular reference. Do you think that these, that these laws are too tough, that we're too tough on sex offenders? Explain what you meant in this case in 2013. Senator, it's not the same thing I said many years ago. Top Democrats believe Judge Jackson will be confirmed by early April, though the nominee is not expected to be fully sworn in for duty on the high court until July, when Justice Stephen Breyer, whom she used to clerk for, steps down. Tomorrow concludes these historic confirmation hearings with testimony from outside witnesses. M1, ABC News on Capitol Hill. A unique day for schools, a unique school day for some San Antonio students. Today at Theme Park was their classroom. A look at what they learned still ahead. And also coming up in sports for San Antonio Spurs. You turn to action tonight. They're in Portland. Andrew Seeley has a preview of the matchup as San Antonio continues to push for that 10th spot in the West. Scientists are always making new discoveries, especially out in space. The latest, a new kind of ice, where it was found, and what makes it different from the stuff in your freezer. That's after the break. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. BuzzFeed shareholders reportedly urging company CEO Jonah Peretti to shut down the entire newsroom. BuzzFeed News reportedly loses about $10 million a year. Now, despite this, Peretti looking to make the news division more profitable. BuzzFeed News Division has won several awards, including a Pulitzer, but it's now shrinking via voluntary buyouts and resignations of their senior staffers. Meanwhile, identity management and authentication provider Okta is confirming that they've been hit by hackers. The company, which serves thousands of businesses, including Pelican, Peloton, Sonos, and T-Mobile says that a hacker had access to one of their employees' laptops for nearly a week back in January. Okta is saying the duration of the breach was so short that the potential impacts to Okta customers is limited. And Apple is back online now after its second consecutive day of outages. Over a dozen Apple apps were experiencing connectivity issues Monday and Tuesday. And while Apple hasn't yet acknowledged the reason behind those outages, they did pin Monday's outages on DNS, or domain name system. That's the pipeline that enables computers to match sites with the correct server. And that's your Cheddar News Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Scientists say they have discovered a new form of ice that could exist on a distant planet. A research team at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, made the discovery and shared their findings in a recently published study. They call the ice formation Ice 7T. It was discovered using high pressure on freezing water until it reached a tetragonal phase. That's when the frozen water molecules formed a powder-like collection of tiny crystals. And scientists say the conditions to create this ice would be hard to find on Earth's surface, but it could be seen on water-rich planets outside of our solar system. Pretty cool. If you're planning to visit Yosemite National Park this summer, you're going to have to log on to your computers first. The park's reservation system went live Wednesday for people to make a reservation during the peak season. That's from May 20th through September 30th. And officials say all visitors will have to reserve their spot in order to get into the park. That can be done at recreation.gov. There's a $2 non-refundable reservation fee. And no, it does not cover the $35 per car entrance charge. Wasn't that Yogi Bear we saw? I think it was. <laughs> hey, a couple of hundred children are spending some time outside the classroom to learn at a theme park. 
that sounds like a really fun day. 250 local elementary school and preschool students are at Morgan's Wonderland taking part in community based instruction. The children will get the chance to study science, math and other subjects at the park. The class will be taught in four 25 minute rotations throughout the property. So what are some of the things that children picked up on today? Today we learned um, how to say um, um, hello in, a, in all the different countries. And um, so I didn't know konnichiwa, so I learned kon konnichiwa. She's going to be impressive with all her friends and her family when she goes home exactly. and starts saying konnichiwa. Several more community-based learning sessions will take place this month and next month. This spring, more than 4,000 students will have an opportunity to participate in the program. Can you say konnichiwa? Konnichiwa. Aloha. There we go. There's another That's one. Good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like that. Good for them. That's a great day. That's a great program. David, I think you got your parks mixed up. Yogi's at Jellystone. Oh, Yogi at Jellystone? Oh. See. Well, then who's it? Who's it? Uh, this one. I don't know. Smokey the Bear? Maybe it's Smokey the Bear. I'm sure they're all friends. Hey, hey boo boo. You got them mixed up. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew it was only a matter of time. 65 degrees so far today. 41 was the low this morning. Records are 96 and 31. We did get down to 31 back in 1968. Pretty good looking weather as we head into the weekend. But as we said earlier, we're going to take a look at the, the track, the potential track of that tornado we saw a couple days ago. That's coming up. We do want to give you another look at the site of a deadly crash. This is on I-35 just east of downtown. I believe we'll take a look in just a minute here. Police were called out to the northbound lanes of I-35. There we go near Walter Street close to 8 o'clock this morning. Still no traffic moving there. Yeah, you're looking at the camera at I-35 and New Braunfels. This is around the Walter Street area. And once again, uh, traffic has been slowed since about 8 o'clock this morning. We do understand that two people were killed in this accident. And Jonathan Coto has been out there all morning long and he'll have a wrap up for us on this accident and this the the two that were killed and why this accident took place. I believe it was a chase. The officers were, were chasing an SUV and it uh, crashed as it was trying to get on the highway. So uh, he'll have that for you on our website and again on KSF 12 News at 5 and 6 for you an update on that. So but be careful if you're headed out to that area. It's still going slow. Exactly. We're going to send things over to Justin for a look at our weather. And guys, earlier you talked about the the tornado that occurred in New Orleans yesterday. It was another busy day east of here. That storm system that brought us the severe weather pushed east and caused more severe weather across the southeastern portion of the country. Look at all the reports yesterday. They were 85 in total. These are just the tornado reports. 27 from Mississippi down to New Orleans and that uh, that tornado that moved across the eastern part of New Orleans really is the big story. There's a lot of damage down there and uh, it moved right across the lake there up uh, up towards Slidell. So this was uh, a pretty large tornado from what we could see on radar and then just visually uh, big issues there. There's going to be a lot of cleanup around New Orleans and then locally. Of course, we've been covering the tornado we had in our area that was around Kingsbury made its way up towards uh, Startown. Uh, there is the approximate path. Now this is preliminary information from the National Weather Service, but uh, it is believed to be an EF1 uh, traveled roughly seven and a half miles lasted from 548 to 608. And they're going to get some finalized data on it soon. But we saw the damage there right in that area between 90 and up towards uh, Texas 80. That's where there was some home damage, tree damage. And that's the kind of stuff, by the way, they look at to determine the strength of the tornado. That's where they come up with the rating. It comes after the event and they look at the damage uh, to see that. Uh, I want to show you here a case I connect picture and I forgot to select it. So let me walk back over here and uh, show you some of the pictures that uh, we got do this one right here. This was the uh, sunrise this morning from Crystal City. Beautiful shot. Some of the clouds coming in and I think we're going to see more clouds like this uh, over the next uh, few hours as clouds start to come in from the north. Take a look at the time lapse here in San Antonio. You can see some off and on clouds, but so far it's been a really beautiful day. Uh, temperatures are warming up 65 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 22 northwesterly winds at about 12 miles per hour and wind gusts have been up around 20, 25, and I think we'll continue to see that throughout the rest of the afternoon. Some of these gusty winds and the forecast calls for those winds uh, right there in that range, 20 to 25. Now, I do think they die down some tonight, and that will lead to some chilly temperatures by tomorrow morning. We mentioned some of those clouds. There's some of the high cloudiness trying to work in from the west. Temperatures at this hour, 
uh, sitting in the 60s in most spots. 67 Rio Medina, 61 Bernie State, 61 Canyon Lake, 66 right now in New Braunfels, and the air is still very, very dry. Uh, so there is still fire danger there, especially west of San Antonio. We've talked about this the last couple of days. It's not until the weekend that the dew point starts to rise a bit and we get out of that sort of danger zone, if you will. And then by next week, we're hoping there's enough moisture to work with to get some showers and storms going. Here's the big picture, and you'll notice there is some what looks like rain there in the Texas Panhandle. Some of that may be reaching the ground, but it is so dry at the surface that this is probably not much more than a few sprinkles. Some of that energy will work through. We're not expecting rain. We are expecting some clouds here. Uh, again, by the afternoon and into tonight, there could be some clouds around. So the forecast looks like this. 70 degrees by 4 p.m. Uh, by this evening, if you're going to be out and about, 68 degrees, 6 o'clock, 67 by 7 p.m. Winds die down this evening. We fall into the 50s, and eventually I think we see some 40s on the map uh, by tomorrow morning. We'll start off at 40, 76 on your Thursday, and then we jump into the 80s, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It'll be a pretty warm weekend, cool mornings, warm afternoons, and a small chance for rain as it stands right now. Tuesday of next week. So can't ditch those jackets just yet in right. the morning if you're heading out. Yep. Thanks, Justin. Mm -hmm. So I know you keep up with the Spurs schedule and you check the standings every day, don't you? <laughs> oh, totally. That's you know it. me, big I, sports fan. I knew you did. So, and But if you look, they still got a shot at making that 10th spot. They're only two games out, but they got to win these games that they should win. That's right. And they're trailing right now the Pelicans. They'll face them coming up later on this week. But first, they got to deal with the Portland Trailblazers tonight. To do that, you need to get DeJounte Murray back on track. He had a bit of a rough shooting percentage night on Sunday. When we come back, we'll hear from him on what went wrong and how he kind of adjusted his mentality. Plus, soccer playoffs kick off tomorrow. We got a quick preview next. Our San Antonio Spurs continue their road trip this evening with a matchup against the Trailblazers, and the Spurs are still in the thick of the chase for the play-in tournament. Now two games behind the Pelicans for the 10th spot in the Western Conference. Those two teams will play in New Orleans on Saturday afternoon. San Antonio's Sunday night victory over the Warriors was impressive, not just because of the late-game heroics there by Keldon Johnson, but also because the Spurs did it on somewhat of an off night for point guard DeJounte Murray, who finished 8 for 24 from the field for 19 points, 8 assists, and 6 rebounds. The shooting percentage jumps off the stat sheet, but DeJounte didn't let his struggles dissuade him. It happens. I'm not going to shoot 50, 60, 70 from the field, you know, every night or whatever. It's the NBA. I'm going to have great nights, bad nights, but what can you do to, you know, help the team win? I just was trying to, you know, play defense, rebound. Uh, if I did see somebody, get somebody the ball. Uh, uh, you know, it was a bad night for me, but it was a great night for the team. We won, so that's all that matters. Here is the matchup tonight. Spurs and the Blazers in Portland at 9 p.m. We'll have early highlights tonight on the Night Beat. The high school soccer playoffs officially begin tomorrow evening, and the Jefferson girls are back in the by district round for the second straight season after repeating as District 27-5A champions this past Friday night. Last year, the Mustangs fell to Floresville in the opening round 3-1. This year, the Mustangs take on McCollum in the Class 5A by district round in Alamo Stadium at 7.30 p.m. The winner advances to face either Bernie Champion or Georgetown in the area round. Those two teams play Friday at 7 at Rattler Stadium in San Marcos. There was a changing of the guard this year for the boys in District 28-6A. Reagan took home the title with an undefeated district record of 13 wins and three ties, dethroning the defending state champion Lee Volunteers. Johnson is the second seed out of 28-6A and Lee will be the third. So the Rattlers will open their playoffs with a bye district matchup against New Braunfels tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. at Comalander Stadium. Another great matchup to watch in the 6A bracket is Brandeis and Smithson Valley. That's also tomorrow at 7 in Bernie Champion. District play has already begun in baseball and there was a great game in District 26 5A between Alamo Heights and Dripping Springs as seen on the BGC app courtesy of Texas Sports Productions yesterday. James Sobey crushed a three run home run and a six run first inning for the Mules who held on to beat the Tigers seven to six improving now to two and three in districts so getting back into that race. Alamo Heights faces Veterans Memorial Saturday at 2 p.m. The defending regional champion Judson's softball team is still undefeated in District 27 6 A competition after last night's four to one victory over Smithson Valley. The Rockets scored two runs in the top of the third and fourth innings, while Emily Ayala held the Rangers to just one run on two hits. 5-0 Judson faces Steele Friday at 7 p.m. I'll be retiring from tennis, and it's the first time I've actually said it out loud, and um, yeah, it's, it's hard to say, but I'm so happy and I'm so ready. Bit of a shock this afternoon, world number one women's tennis player Ash Barty announced her retirement today at the age of 25. 
Barty had won three Grand Slams on three different surfaces, and she became the first Aussie to win the Australian Open in 44 years back in January. That's a heck of a way to go out, and good for her for choosing to go out. I know a lot of these athletes like to drag it out and see how yeah. much more they can get. But if you're going to go out, you got to go out on top. But most people are just getting started at 25. Uh, I know. She's got her entire life ahead of her. She's still got another career to go. Wow. <laughs> yes. All right, Andrew, thank you a lot. Speaking of uh, another career, these two have, <laughs> they, this is just. <laughs> what? Fiesta's huh? close, so I know what that means. Yeah. Uh -huh. Look what we have right. here. We are going to bite into some iconic Fiesta food like chicken on a stick. Ben De Los Santos, Benji's Munch is here. What makes the perfect chicken on a stick? Oh, it's a, it's a good chicken breast and it's the right breading. It's a, we just, we do it right at Benji's Munch. You want to pack that breading yeah, on, Yeah, right? you just press it, press it, press it. Make sure it's nice and pressed. Simple cracker crust. And cracker. now, Mary Mary, quite contrary, how's your garden grow? Yes, Jen. Ooh, we're steaming. Yes, we're here at Rainbow Gardens. It's the first week of spring. I'm real excited about this. Robin Norton is the event manager here. And Hi. there's certain fruits and veggies that we can start planting now, right? Absolutely. So for fruits, we've got strawberries um, and uh, some others. And for veggies, we've got our uh, tomatoes. Uh, you want to get those in the ground right now. And for a complete list, you want to go to our website at www.rainbowgardens.biz. It has everything you need to know. And we're going to talk spring planters as well. Back to you guys. All right, so we want to know how your spring garden is going. Show us yeah. your spring garden at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. Send us a picture. We'd love to see it. You may see it in the shop. You got some art for us, too. You're I not, you're do. An artist. Okay, if you want to go release your inner Jackson Pollock and have some great family fun, I show you the latest place you can do that. And mini donuts all coming up on SA Live. Look at that. Yes. Welcome back. We're in the upper 60s already. We'll be in the low of the 70s for highs today. Windy conditions. We'll see some clouds moving in a little bit later this afternoon and this evening. Still chilly tonight, though. 40 degrees to start your Thursday. Still windy tomorrow. We get rid of some of that wind over the weekend. Temperatures warm up to 85 Saturday, 85 Sunday. It'll be a warm weekend. We're hoping for some rain chances, not storm chances, but rain chances next week, guys. All right, Justin, thank you. I was a little concerned. That, I mean, the chicken on the stick. Can't beat it, but the camera kind of fogged up there. It I did. What, I, I don't really want one now. That right, looks see? good. I'm hungry. I'm ready for lunch. That's the whole idea. Get you working. hungry. So it's working. All right. Well, here's more chicken on the stick. SA Live starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Uh, oh, oh, hello and happy Wednesday. Bring that chicken over here. It is that time of year. Chicken on a stick. Fever takes over the Alamo City and SA Live. Good afternoon. I'm Fiona Borstiza. And I'm Mike Ostrich. Mm. Lee, by the way, if you want one, come down quick because, boy, you know these <laughs> things are going to be going fast. Yes, and like we said, it's that time of year where folks have no problem waiting hours for one iconic Fiesta snack. But did you know there's at least one place here in town that has it all year long? Yes, indeed. Ben De Los Santos, owner of Benji's Munch, is here to show us how they satisfy your craving for chicken on a stick. 365 days a year, and oh goodness gracious, plus a lot of other goodies. Good hey afternoon, sir. Hey, y'all. How's it going? Yeah, Good. glad to be here. Good to be here. So what is the secret to a great chicken on a stick? Well, you got to have really good chicken, first of all. So we do breast meat, so it's a really nice. So we hand cut our breast and get a really premium breast, and then we do cracker crumb breading with just a dip in buttermilk. Okay. Very simple. It's not hard. So it's just... And, it's, and it's, it, it's, it's easy. And that way, when it is simple like that, the good flavor of the chicken Absolutely. comes through really nicely. It comes nicely, through right? all the way. We do serve it with a little bit of cilantro ranch. you got to get in there and press it, Fiona, hard. Mm. Don't be scared. Yeah, and you said that's the trick. Is yeah, it's you really want to get it in there, flip it a couple of times. And mm -hmm. it also helps tenderize it when you're pressing with the back of your palms. So um, we do this. We put it on some of our sandwiches. But we mostly sell it on a chicken on a stick. And we sell a ton of those. Boy, you're going to town with that well, thing. She's doing a great job. She's doing a great job. That's the way you did it. So that way it all sticks on there just like there we go if you can see nicely that. coated very goes good into the fryer yeah. and what kind of oil do you use uh, we use a soybean oil um, for our fryers and okay. it, it comes out really nice so it doesn't really add too much of the oil flavor mm -hmm. to it or no anything? no uh, the breading that we use the cracker crumbs do not hang on like a flour batter flour type 
uh, breading. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is real light. It's not going to be super heavy, and you just get a nice juicy chicken inside once you get going. We'll mm -hmm. you'll, you'll see. Okay. It's a really nice one. And that's one breast just pounded out, right? Uh, that's that's a, a large breast slice. Okay. Uh, on a cross cut so it actually will make it nice and tender when you do it, when okay. you eat it. And when you do the sandwiches, it's basically that. That, you just cut, cut it in half and mm -hmm. we double stack them. Okay. So that's, uh, they're huge sandwiches too, so. All right, and you have some Fiesta events you're looking forward to, right? Yeah, yeah, we're doing a uh, Taste of the North Side coming up in a couple of weeks. And then uh, we've got a really good one that we uh, love going to, we've done it every year, is Taste of the Republic. And that's a really, really nice event to where you get to uh, showcase some chef skills and we're doing some unique stuff. And we're doing a, uh, um, for that event, we're doing a uh, queso um, chicharron with barbacoa. We do a cocoa barbacoa. Which you okay. have right so there. So I did bring some barbacoa because we're talking about fiesta. So I went ahead and brought some barbacoa to do us to our tacos. We do tacos at the restaurant. And we throw down bacon fat on the tortilla uh, to get it nice and toasty. So what uh, better than bacon yeah, fat? Yeah, yeah. Right? So we toast it on one side, gets a nice crunch, so it adds a little texture. And our barbacoa is a little bit different. It add, we had the uh, um, cinnamon and chocolate. It's called a cocoa barbacoa. Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually won the Big Red and Barbacoa Festival in 2016 and second place in 2018. So some really uh, unique flavors that you're gonna find there. So this is good stuff. I'm uh, yeah, absolutely, right, absolutely. So that's going. Just gonna get nice and toasted, and then uh, we're gonna pull out our barbacoa, and it kind of leans towards a mole flavor. So it's not just like a traditional barbacoa, but it has all the. Hold on, hold on. Oh, we're, gonna, we're gonna let it get nice and toasty. And uh, we'll flip it a little bit, but we want it to get nice and crunchy a little bit. And your prizes, your uh, winnings for barbacoa, I mean, that's just a long line of first places that you've got because your grilled cheese is at the top of the heat. Stellar. Absolutely. Uh, they've had the grilled cheese festival two years in a row here in San Antonio. Uh, they had to you know, take a little time off for COVID and stuff, but. Uh, we want it every year, so we have them. And they actually announced that we're doing it again this year. So it's back up, I think, in November, November 14th or something like that. So we've had your grilled cheese. Describe oh, what's in it. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be Angus Chuck. Oh, the, oh, the grilled cheese. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, that's going to be um, the spinach and artichoke grilled cheese, and we add bacon to it. Uh, oh. So it's uh, we make our own spinach and artichoke dip, mozzarella provolone, fresh spinach, and then we add crispy bacon. It and grill it up. Literally to yeah, die for. We've had it before here and you is guys this, is this done? Is that ready? Yeah, I think you're good. That's done. Yeah, okay. you're good. All right. So I'm to, down. Yeah, I think you're good. These are Yeah, these, these are, are both ready to go. Okay. So we're gonna set them on here. Yep. And then we're gonna serve ourselves some barbacoa and we're not scared. We're gonna just and we only we don't flip them. That side's gonna get nice and cooked up. Uh -huh. Um so it and holds the juices, the other side's gonna have a nice texture to it. Okay. Tell so, me how much. Load it up right load in the middle. Up. The other great staple food there that you, go. That's good right there. you are going into competition for is mac and cheese competition? Yeah, we have a mac and cheese festival that's coming up at the end of April. And uh, we've actually entered that one. So that's perfect, okay. Fiona. What's in your mac and cheese that's it's, so special? It's a five cheese mac and cheese that we make mm. scratch at the restaurant. And this one that we're doing competition, one whole thing of avocado. So grab one of those and throw it right in the middle. Just lay it across right there, just like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. And yeah, then just, pour your chicken on a stick, you've got a... And then you put some cilantro and onions on it. it. And the cilantro ranch for the chicken on a stick. Okay. Absolutely. So we'll just try a little bite Beautiful. Right and here, just cilantro baby. and onions on it, just like that. Okay. Beautiful. Pop that And then in just there. the cilantro, should be some cilantro yep, right yep, there. There you go. It. Where's your place located? Uh, Bitters and Blanco. So we're at uh, 1218 West Bitters. Uh, um, it's just uh, right there near uh, Artisan's Alley going down uh, Bitters. Mm. Okay. Mm. That, All right, is this good that, to go? That chicken on a stick a, is good. A nice light coating. Yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't weigh you down, doesn't hold on grease in or anything like that. Right. Oh, goodness gracious, that's delicious. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. Be careful, it's going to drip on you. All Be right, careful. so don't forget, you can get chicken on a stick every day all year at Benji's Munch. Plus, you can catch him at the fifth annual Taste of the Republic Fiesta event. It's next Thursday, March 31st, from 5 to 9 p.m. at The Good Kind, located at 1127 South St. Mary Street. And of course, more information on website, uh, salive.com. Click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Benji, awesome. delicious as always. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having us. Certainly. Appreciate y'all. All right, well, spring is here and it's time to get those gardens in the ground. But, you know, what should you be planting? Exactly. Uh, something, in my case, that won't die, hopefully. There's one spot in town where you can get all the gardening you need, all the help that you need. And our green thumb, Jen Tobias <laughs> is out there on the north side. Hey, Jen. 
Hello. Yes, I try. I, I really do try. But this is a, such a happy place to be, and it's that perfect time of the year to do some spring planters. Robin is the event manager here at Rainbow Gardens, and she's going to show us how we can mix and match and what plants go best together. Right, Robin? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Well, first, I'm going to show you some that we actually got in just today from one of our growers. And if you'll notice, all of the plants either have the yellow or the white, and that kind of makes a, a design pop. Yes. So um, we definitely want to incorporate that in. We've got some uh, really pretty petunias here, verbena. Uh, I have homestead verbena at home. It grows. Uh, it was the very first thing that bloomed this spring. So that was. You mentioned a hanging basket. Yes, ma'am. And for those, it's good to be full. Yes. Right. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Full, and you like cascading, and like these verbenas cascade so beautifully. They're so pretty. Uh, they're absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> And then we've got a very similar one in purple mm -hmm. as well. And then uh, we also have some combo pots um, like this. Uh, and th these were actually planted from bulbs. So we do have some of these for sale, but if you're wanting to plant these yourself, mm -hmm. uh, you could come here uh, in the fall and uh, purchase these bulbs and then they bloom very nicely in the spring. It's, it's so good to keep in mind the schedule of planting and what you need to plant. Cause like you said, the bulbs are for the fall, but they look so gorgeous. They now. do, oh, absolutely, so absolutely. And this one's so pretty. I love the contrast with the colors. Absolutely. And then they, they threw in just a couple of these oh, yes. on the side. So that looks absolutely gorgeous. It really makes it pop. Um, um, I love these uh, flowers. They're just absolutely gorgeous. And these you can just pop right into a pot at home because yes. you guys kind of make it easy with these uh, absolute selections here. But yes. let, there is a process, right? Yes. When we're doing planters and you want to do them at home. So let's talk about that. Okay. Uh, so you're going to want to pick something that's trailing. Uh, so I, I just suggested the uh, verbena. This is homestead verbena. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so you'll want to take this out of the pot okay. and kind of give it a little little massage here on the bottom. Why is it important to do that with the roots? Because you want your plant, your, your plants to be able to spread out and you're just kind of loosening them up mm -hmm. so that you can um, get those spread, they'll spread nicely. Okay. So we'll put those in and we're going to kind of use like a little triangle method. Okay. So we'll kind of do one, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. These are so pretty. They are you said gorgeous. you had these at home, right? And they yes. take over the bed. The they flower. really do. <laughs> they, they jumped the flower bed. It's in the oh, lawn I now, but that. I love it. It's absolutely gorgeous. And then, and then some we'll white. Take, you said? Yes, yeah. some white. Yes, absolutely. Pops make that pop. Pops. So put those in here. And you have such a huge selection here, right? We really do. <laughs> and we have a lot of uh, uh, full-size plants, but we also have the, the little starters in the four inch. And uh, you know, these turn into large plants. You can get a lot of value for your money um, going with the four inch. Okay. And it's fun to make planters. Yes, and this and is the height that you're talking height, about. The height, yes. yes. So we want to get have something that's going to be nice and tall. So that is okay. perfect. I love those <laughs> colors, Jen, that looks fabulous. <laughs> Trying to be like you over here, looking like a pro. <laughs> <laughs> and these are so pretty. Now they look like blue bonnets, but what are these again? Those are called angelonias. And they are also uh, have the nickname summer snapdragons. So you would take your mm -hmm. snapdragons out so um, because it's too hot and you could replace them with the uh, summer snapdragons, which are the angelonias. Beautiful. All right. So this is coming together. It is. And you guys are here on site to help, located off Bandera. There's two locations in San Antonio, but I like what you told me earlier. You're website is such a good reference and a resource absolutely if you have any questions even for planting veggies yes. right oh absolutely for it for anything uh, any questions at all about plants uh, you can go to our website we are a wealth we have a wealth of information posted there and that's uh, www.rainbowgardens.biz perfect and in the second half of the show we're going to show you how to create the perfect butterfly garden yes I'm so excited. don't <laughs> mind too. the dirty hands okay we're going <laughs> to toss it back to you guys what do you think how's that look beautiful oh, mm -hmm. very pretty <laughs> very pretty <laughs> It's amazing to me. So quickly, so simple. When you have somebody who knows exactly what yes. they're they're doing like yes, that. Yes, so they're your training wheels. Get you know? very jealous looking at those pictures. <laughs> All right. Of course, we'll see Jen again in a few minutes. But we wanted to know how your spring garden is going. Yeah. Make us all jealous. Show us the beautiful pictures. Have you been out there? We've had some nice weather for it. A little bit of rain here and there. And uh, yeah, send us those pictures and, uh, you know, see, we'll get them on there a little bit later on if I can spit this out. <laughs> As I love case out on Facebook and Twitter. All right. 
Still ahead on SA Live. Since there are many, that means you can eat a million of them, right? <laughs> sure. You bring a full donut bar straight to you and how they're taking this classic treat to the next level. But first, things are about to get messy. We'll take you to a local studio where anyone can become an artist and you're encouraged to let loose and have fun. It's a new spot for family fun and memories next on SA Live.